Hi, Tech Rabbit here. So what we could do in this video is go over um, the basics of um, lab power supply and um, this will be kind of like a review of what I'm using and then um, a kind of suggestion of what, what I think is kind of good to have in a, in a, in a lab experimental power supply. So, so my unit um, here is a um, three voltage channel unit. So it actually has two independent channels with um, minus and plus and then a grounding. And then it also has a separate um, 5 volt output, which is 3 amps, 5 volts per minute. And then um, you can run this in different modes, um, which makes it kind of flexible. So the first mode is that they're both channels are independent. And then you can adjust the voltage independently on um, both channels. And then also that both have um, current regulation, so you can set a max limit for the um, output current. And um, this is rated as um, 2 times 30 volts and 2 amps on each um, output. And the the good thing with it, with these um, power supplies is they're also short circuit limited, so that when when you when you make a mistake with your wiring or something, then it will actually limit the current. Um, it also has um, a mode to um, run the um, uh, the uh, voltages in um, in series. And when they're in series, then the, basically you should take the output from here, from the first first channel. And then the first channel is master. So as you see, as I adjust the first channel, um, the voltage changes here. So then you get um, uh, plus minus 7 volts, actually. So it can go up to 60 volts when it's combined. But then the amp, amps is still limited to 2. Uh, and the the interesting thing is, is it as it shows it here is you actually have a negative temperature nah, negative voltage which um, you can actually extract um, Ah, sorry. I need to take it there and there. So I wanted to actually sew this because it's illogical. So if you want the um, the uh, minus um, negative voltage out, then you need to go from the master channel ground to the <laughs> secondary channel ground. <laughs> But what, what what I mean is that you can actually r run this unit in in some when you're dealing with op amps or something then in circuits like more linear circuits. Then um, sometimes they actually have a have a source voltage requirement of plus minus something, uh, and and usually they're symmetrical plus, plus minus. So you actually have the option of taking um, taking out. Um, if you don't want to use the the voltage difference between the, like from the main channel, then you can actually take the negative um, voltage from the these two outputs, which actually makes it good. And and then also you have the option to run them in um, in um, uh, parallel. So that means you get up to you get 30 volts and four amps. And then also the same issue is that the the, the first channel is the uh, or from the camera perspective the second channel is the most. Uh, anything else to say about the unit? Well, it's actually been in service now for yeah quite a few years now, and um, I haven't know it's got two fans in the back, so it's it's well cooled. Um, I've been short circuiting it a lot, <laughs> so and and I think the accuracy is reasonable. I mean the the, the ripple and stuff. I mean, you, of course you can't expect this is not an extremely expensive unit, so you can't expect 
like unreasonably accurate performance. But I must say, for a ho for all the hobbyist circuits and stuff that I've built, um, or, or uh, yeah, experimental circuits, it's actually been been very good. And then, um, of course, you go when you're taking out the, um, the voltage. You can either have, you can either screw a wire into this terminal. You can just. these connectors you could actually screw it in there or optionally than that, which is the most common way that I do it is that when I'm taking out the voltage then I use these banana banana style plugins so you can plus You get the readout of what the actual current is, and then here you can limit the current. So, so now you hear a small click, and then it's uh, it, it's also light indicates so that then you can actually reduce the you know how you you can preset a maximum limit for the, how much current you expect the circuit to take, and then you can connect in the circuit. And then if the current limitation comes on, then you know probably there might be something wrong in the circuit, so you don't. Uh, you don't actually put full full effect, uh, or f you put the full two amps on a circuit that might be faulty, and then it, it might actually break something. But if you put a low, a predominant, you know, you start with a low current, and then you connect in the experimental circuit just to make sure you haven't got any short circuits, and, and that it's working um, as expected. Before you continue. Um. I can I can recommend getting one of these and I, and I mean the 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 variations in configurations for power supplies of the of this and smaller types they're endless so I, I can't say that that one should buy specifically you know, this unit um, even though I found this unit to be very very practical and very useful but I mean there are you know you should look at what what do you predominantly do and and um, for example, if you're mainly going to do digital electronics, then then I would think the one would probably get a lot, get away with one channel plus a fixed five volt. Um, and um, if one is doing more like power electronics and stuff, then maybe the, this is not enough. Uh, also, the critical point to remember is that in some circuitry, one might want to have um, an adjustable AC source. And, and then, of course, these. It's actually relatively difficult to find an adjustable AC source that is not um, variac um, based. So I mean it, that you don't have the um, uh, the isolation between the actual mains and the experimental circuit you have. And so variacs aren't very good because then you don't get the you don't get the isolation. The protection. So if you connect a circuit to a varia, varia output, an oscilloscope, we're not even liable to cause them. So uh, yeah. So that's my only comment. So the restriction, of course, this is a DC only power supply. So so sometimes you actually need an, an AC source. Okay, but anyway, that kind of wraps it up for this one. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you um, enjoyed it, consider um, giving a like. Uh, uh, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified for more videos, um, inform others, there might be other people that are actually interested in considering getting a power supply for, for um, their electronic pro electronics projects. And, and then you could like watch this video, it's like, okay, this is the kind of list of things that you need to look at, and then you could consider for yourself, like, okay, what, what do I want to take from that list and um, use when, I'm actually, when you actually go out and try and find a reasonably priced unit to buy. So, anyway, I'll see you in the next one.